Hey guys, so this video we're going to look at the indicators used by the RBA when it conducts monetary policy. So obviously before the RBA conducts its monetary policy, it needs to decide whether to increase or decrease the cash rate. And to do so, they must have economic indicators to justify their decision to either increase or decrease the cash rate. Because as we know, the first step, just put one, is to announce the change in cash rate. change in the cash rate plus justify so they need to justify why they've changed the cash rate as well as announce that change so here we're going to look at the various uh, indicators that the RBA considers when it changes the cash rate so the first one and the most important indicator is the trend in inflation. So as we know, the goal of low inflation is the primary goal that the RBA must focus on. And so the RBA must take careful uh, analysis of the quarterly trends in the headline rate of CPI, as well as the underlying inflation rate, the weighted median and the trimmed mean. So they're going to look at all these different types of trends relating to inflation headline or underlying plus trimmed mean and weighted median all these different types of measure of inflation as well as the cost of materials wage costs as well as other business costs which would impact on cost inflation and so when the RBA sees that the inflation is out of its band of around two to three percent CPI and they do this by annualizing the figure then they would justify changes in the inflation rate or if they think that the inflation, there is a trend of an upward sloping inflation graph, such as that. And so what they do is, since they're forward looking, even if the inflation rate is within this band of 2-3%, to but if they expect it to go higher than 2-3%, to then they would announce a change in their monetary policy stance. Okay, so that's the first indicator used by the ABA. The second indicator is the levels of national spending and production. So what they look at is how much we're spending, and they're going to look at that through aggregate demand, and how much we're producing, which is done through GDP figures. And so because this is very important, because production relates to this idea of aggregate supply, and national spending relates to this idea of aggregate demand. When aggregate demand exceeds aggregate supply, then inflation conditions would rise. And so, if they're monitoring the levels of national spending in comparison to production levels, then they can see that when production is relatively low compared to national spending, then therefore they would have to justify it by increasing the cash rate so as to decrease the level of expenditure so that inflation does not occur. So by looking at levels of national spending and production, they are able to monitor inflation more thoroughly. Thirdly, they're going to look at labor market conditions. And these labor market conditions look at unemployment rates, job vacancies, uh, labor force, participation as well as the labor force underutilization rate okay, so th these are the four primary facets that we're going to look at uh, so they're, they're relating to these labor market conditions 
And so when there are strong labor market conditions, we can see that aggregate supply or production levels would improve. And when production level improve, that means aggregate supply would slowly meet or exceed aggregate demand and that would help inflation ease. And so when there are strong labor market conditions, as characterized by low unemployment rates, high job vacancies, strong participation and a very low underutilization under rate, we can see that the government could in fact use uh, contractionary monetary policy in order to decrease the rate of demand poor inflation due to such strong labor market conditions. However, if inflation is achieved and there are very weak labor market conditions, then therefore the RBA could use that figure to justify a decrease in the cash rate in order to stimulate growth without jeopardizing the achievement of low inflation. Okay. The fourth factor, which we're just going to put here, is the budgetary policy stance. And now the budgetary policy stance refers to the budget outcome. So whether the budget is in surplus or in deficit, which means if the budget is in surplus, then the federal government has adopted a contractionary stance, and with the government budget is in deficit, the, the government has adopted an expansionary stance. So what this suggests is that monetary policy could either conflict or could help help the budget to achieve these economic goals. So when the budget aims for a more contractionary stance, the monetary policy stance could then therefore help the budget achieve this this economic uh, objective by again increasing interest rates. So it looks at how the government operates when determining its policy. Finally, we're going to look at international developments. So this relates to this idea that the RBA is in fact forward-looking. So it looks at overseas trends in inflation, growth, activity, interest rates, terms of trade, and other events which relate to our exchange rate and our current account deficit. So for example, in recent times, China's growth was very large, and they looked at this as being a very upwards or an upwards pressuring movement to our exchange rate because since China's growth was very large, that means that the demand for exports would increase, and so as a result, aggregate demand would increase. And so what the government could do is increase the interest rates. However, looking a few years back from then, we can see that the GFC had occurred and that overseas conf uh, dwindling confidence or pessimism had actually caused economic growth overseas to slow down and that would that had dramatic, dramatically or drastically affected our export prices or export volume. So as a result, aggregate demand was slow in the economy and the pessimism in the US USA following the GFC or the or the um, the global financial crisis had actually slowed the economy in Australia. So the government had slowly decreased the interest rate from a higher 4.5 percent to around 2.5 percent at the moment. So they're expanding. They're using international developments as a justification to conduct monetary policy here. So they're the main indicators used by the RBA when justifying monetary policy stances.